Apart from 15 million from the El Fire era, cash funding keeps flowing from the Khan. Over 10 years, the total amount funded surpasses a staggering f Football and finances is, you know, there's a lot of things happening. It's Tuesday, you know what that means. Get ready for another deep dive into football club financials, where we dissect a football club's numbers, revealing how off-field performance stack up against those on the field. Brace yourselves as we dive into the financial world of Fulham Football Club. We're headed straight to the River Thames to unfold the financial journey of the cottages over the last decade. Travel back to 2013, where Fulham sat comfortably in Premier League mid-table as the Khan family takeover loomed. But fast forward a year, and their 13-year stint in top flight would come to an abrupt halt. Fulham would spend the next four seasons regrouping in the Championship, before Tom Kearney's strike to win the playoffs, and with it, a return to football's top table. But in 2019, the Fulham yo-yo would make its debut. The next four seasons see Fulham dance between the Prem and the Championship, clinching the Championship title in 2022 and daring to secure Premier League survival at the third time of asking. It was all happening in the dugout as well. A whopping 10 different managers have guided Fulham over the past decade. If you know their names, join in the chorus with me. Joel, Muhlenstein, McGath, Simmons, Grant, Gray, Yukanovic, Ranieri, Parker, Silver. Now let's shift our focus away from the field. What unfolded behind the scenes? Hold on because revenues at Craven Cottage are on a wild ride. A four year stint in the championship hit hard, but from 2019, Fulham hops on a financial roller coaster. The lifeline? Enhanced parachute payments in 2020 and 2022, propelling them back to the Premier League. Breaking it down by league position, top flight revenues soar, but post relegation payments temper the impact. Surprisingly, Premier League revenues on average are only 2.2 times greater. If we look at the beginning and the end of the decade, we see some intriguing trends. Zooming into 2013, gate receipts comprise 17% of revenue at 12.5 million. By 2022 though, that has nearly halved, contributing just 10%. Is that just because they're playing in a lower tier? Fortunately, Fulham spills the beans on both total and average attendance each season. Now let's dive into the crowd dynamics and figure out what's cooking. Despite Fulham playing four extra home games in the championship seasons, total attendance dips. Add to that 2022, when it plunged to under 300,000. Is it post-COVID unease or perhaps exhaustion from the roller coaster since 2019? And can Fulham return to those heady days of a decade ago? One certainty emerges when the club takes a hit, so do revenues from in-person fans. Yeah, it's a difficult one, to be honest with you. Now let's talk about profit. It's painting a grim picture. Not a single season of profit for the cottages. Massive losses in 2020, courtesy of a double whammy, COVID and flip-flopping divisions. Oddly, there's no clear correlation with league position. Average losses even out across the divisions. Confused? Well, let's unravel this mystery in our p &L walkthrough. Ready your timer, grey out the revenue, and let's dive straight into staff costs. Post the 2014 relegation, Fulham streamlined the wage bill to under 40 million. Upon the return to the big leagues, it surged. Fast forward to 2021, we're talking 114 million, bolstering the playing squad to 77. Across the board, wages breached the 90% mark in all but three seasons. Now let's gauge the efficiency of those staff costs. How much did each point earned cost them in wages? In the Championship, points come at roughly £1 million each. Transition to the Prem, and behold the steep rise. Over £4 million per point. Considering only staff costs, we are in the red for half the seasons. And that's not all. What about operating costs? These swing between 10 to 20 million. Factor these in and behold, a lone Premier League season emerges with a positive EBITDA. Third up, stadium and facilities. Typically it's not a focus area for us, but 2017 paints a different picture, a significant cost spike. The Riverside Stands long-term development project took an unexpected turn. When Fulham presented a new proposal in 2017, they had to write off 7 million for older plans now confined to the scrap heap. Last but not least, let's talk transfer fees. We've got some standout years, especially in those two Premier League seasons during the yo-yo period, splurging over 110 million aiming to secure their Premier League status, but alas, falling short each time. So there you have it, Fulham's story in black and white. Losses abound, yet a glimmer of hope emerges through an improved margin in the Premier League. Yes, are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Is, your, is, your, is your opinion? They respect your opinion. But does the cash align with the profit narrative we've just seen? 
As always, we're examining the combo of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, driven by those EBITDA line items, mirrors the P&L. Only 2019 sees inflows. In all other years, cash flows out the door, averaging 18 million in the championship years, with 2019 elevating the Prem to a modest inflow. Now, turning our attention back to transfers, except for 2013, it's cash out the door again. Over the 10 years, Fulham's net transfer spend reached a staggering £248 million, with the majority spent during that yo-yo spell. It's a treasury team's worst nightmare. And add those together? Not one year has seen cash flowing into the club, and that COVID impacted 2021? Whew. Over 10 years, a whopping £366 million has departed the cottage's coffers. So who's fitting the bill? Apart from 15 million from the L fired era, cash funding keeps flowing from the Khan. Over 10 years, the total amount funded surpasses a staggering 550 million. Football and finances is, you know, there's a lot of things happening. I yep, it's undoubtedly a billionaire's game. So what's happened since? Well, third time is the charm for Fulham. They held on to their Premier League status with their highest league finish in a decade. Perhaps things are looking up for Fulham and they can finally consider putting that yo-yo away. Next time, we'll be heading to the South Coast as we look at AFC Bournemouth. See you next time.